I've been seeing this button effect everywhere recently. It's becoming really popular again, this skeuomorphic style where the button looks 3D. So of course I wanted to figure out how to make it in Figma and I did. So let's go through how you can do it as well. Let's go through together how to create this sort of button design. So I'll teach you the principles of how to get the effect and then we can play around with it a little bit and you can see how with the same effects, you can start customizing it and making it a bit more branded with it, whatever direction you need it to be. So let's make this button together. So first off, click T on your keyboard, just so we can write your word. So we're gonna write contact will be our word. Might just zoom in a little bit so we can see it. Let's bump this up to 18. Now with your word selected, click Shift A to apply auto layout. So we're just setting up the basis of the button right now. So let's bump up this side padding, make it a big chunky button today and this top and bottom padding. For this first one, let's just round the corners all the way, so 99. Come down and click Fill. And let's select a color to start with. Let's make this first button a blue sort of color. Let's select our wording and change it from black to white. Now this is the basis of our button, but as you can see, it's quite flat at the moment. So Let's work on how you give it this sort of 3D skeuomorphic effect. So we'll come down on the side panel here and click effects. And the first effect we might leave on is just a soft drop shadow. So let's make the blur about 15 to start with and move the color down to about 15%. I've studied a lot of these buttons and try to work out how people create them. And this seems to be a fairly standard way of doing it. And then you can just customize it and kind of craft it whichever way you want from here. But the standard way of seeing it is you add an inner shadow at the top. You make the top one white. So make it hex code six Fs. And then we want to move around the settings in here. So let's move this up to about 35%. And what this is doing, if we zoom right in, is you can see it's adding this inner shadow at the top, which is a white. Now, after that, we want to add another inner shadow. But this time, instead of having it at the top, we wanted to have it at the bottom. So to move it down to the bottom, you want to make this Y axis actually go into a negative. And as you can see, as it goes into a negative, it starts moving up the bottom area. So let's leave this at about 30%. And as you can already see, this is the basis of achieving that skeuomorphic 3D effect is just with playing around with these inner shadows. So let's leave that as the first one as the most basic version. Now let's make a copy of it. Command C and Command V just to make a copy. And then I'll show you how we can edit it and keep customizing it to change it and achieve sort of different effects. So for this one, let's change the color of it to purple. And now one of the things that I've seen is that this top shadow, you want to make it a little different and you want to make that white a bit more sharp. So for your top inner shadow, if we leave that at 4435 and then we add another inner shadow up the top, but this one, we want to actually select the hex color of the button itself. And now let's make this one quite tight. So two pixel blur, and then about two on the Y axis. And then you get to see this kind of top little effect here as well, which helps make it feel a bit more 3D as it blurs into it. From here, you can customize it. So this is a nice shadow. Maybe you want to make the top a bit stronger with the white. Maybe it's not standing out as enough. So you can just move these numbers up a little bit or move them down, move it up to 50. And now you can really see how we've made quite quickly this 3D button effect. Let's make one more version. I'll show you a slightly different way that you can show this effect. So select this one, Command C, Command V. We'll drag a copy of it. And now let's get rid of all of the shadows on this one. So this one's a slightly different way of achieving the effect. Let's change this one to black, just so it looks different than the other one. And what we actually want to do here is, first off, we want to remove the auto layout from here. So right click and select remove auto layout. Then we want to copy this frame, 
Command C, Command V. With the copied version, we want to delete the word. And now we're actually going to make this into a stroke. So click Shift X to flip it from a fill to a stroke. We need to get rid of the drop shadow on it. And let's change the stroke of this to a gradient from a solid fill color and make both points white. So white at the top and white at the bottom. Now we want to make the top one 100 to start and the bottom one zero. This is a little tricky because you can't see it right now. So I'll just draw a rectangle so we can actually see it. Now we want to put this stroke within this shape and this is going to show the shadow that we had before with the inner shadows. So to do this, we need to make it a little bit smaller because currently it's the same size as this button. So come across to the width and minus four off the width and then minus four off the height. Now with this selected, hold shift, click your button and align them both. So this is on top of it now. Align it to the middle and align it to the middle. Now within here, we want to customize it. So select your stroke. And this time we want to actually apply a very light layer blur about you can play around with it, but about one to two pixels. Now let's go back into our gradient to customize it. So it was set to 100%, but that's a bit strong at the moment. So let's knock it down to about 40%, maybe up to 50 or 60. Let's go about 65%. And that's another way to achieve that inner shadow a bit more defined if you're looking for this kind of outline style to achieve that sort of look. But as you can see here, it's actually quite easy to achieve this sort of button effect. Now really, you can just follow these principles that I set up of having the drop shadow, having the inner shadow effect up the top, which is normally a light color, the inner shadow effect down the bottom, which is normally the darker color. And then from there, it's all optional. You can add that extra inner shadow up the top, the same color to get that more defined line, or you can bump up the color of the top or the bottom and play around with it to see what you think looks right and what looks more 3D. But really, they're the three main kind of effects to apply to it. And if you do that, you'll be able to create this button style easily in Figma. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If there's something that you want me to make a video on or a tutorial, leave it in the comments below. And while you're here, check out another video 